you. I'm not, I'm not real big on talking on microphones, but we got a good crowd, so I'll, I'll use it today. Thank you all very much for coming out. Uh, before Aaron comes up and talks to you about the importance of uh, sticking together as a community, I wanted to take the opportunity and let you know exactly what we've been doing as far as our investigation in order to inform you, you know, a little bit about what we know. And, and believe me, we're barely scratching the surface. Um, and, then, and then hopefully that will trigger some questions for you. Um, with our team today here, if you saw her on the way in, uh, uh, Melissa Dutcher has some questionnaires that if you're interested um, as part of the investigation, those questionnaires will ask personal questions that um, will be kept confidential, but they're about your medical history, some of the concerns and questions you have that you're not going to want to ask um, in a public forum like this, that will help inform us as to some of the medical concerns um, in the community because we're receiving a lot of messages about that and we want to make sure that we're responsive to that. Um, we also have uh, someone with us today, Jay Courtney, who's with uh, the legal team that can answer any, any general legal questions. Um, they're looking at this as part of the investigation at this time as well. Um, we are still in the investigation phase, and what we like to call this meeting today here is exactly that. This is the first day or the kickoff of our investigation, and we'll see where it progresses and what we can do to help this community. Um, Dr. Mensch did an excellent job in his presentation. Um, on a lot of the medical science associated with this. I'd like to just kind of let you know a little bit about what we found out. A lot of people are thinking that in May of 2013, there was an event that occurred where the state issued a notice of violation of Stericycle for emitting the contaminants into the environment. You need to understand that this has been a problem since the day you moved into this community and since the day Stericycle began its incineration of medical waste at this facility. Um, you need to understand that that incinerator facility was initially applied for a permit to burn approximately 1,300 pounds per hour of medical waste. Right after they submitted that, they asked for an increase to 1,850 pounds per hour with the same equipment. That was uh, allowed for startup. They started up the plant and then immediately applied for a, an increase to 2,500 pounds an hour. So what that means is the facility with the specifications and design and engineering that went into it that was allowed to originally burn the 1,300 pounds per hour is burning you know, almost 100% you know, more than what it was originally designed for. And so that's an incredible concern. It would be the equivalent of running your car at about 9,000 RPMs nonstop. And we all know what would happen to our car if we did that. That's exactly the analogy that should be used when when thinking about what's going on in Stericycle. This actually began, and the citation that the state issued to Stericycle in May of 2013 began in December of 2011. And in 2011, the state found out, um, you know, by their limited regulatory oversight of this facility, that they were indeed violating their permit for many of these chemicals, dioxin by way of example, four times greater than what they were authorized to pollute your environment with. The concept that you need to understand is that the state of Utah has sold your air. Your air is a natural resource that belongs to you. And the permitting process is the equivalence of selling the air and allowing pollution up to a certain level. So they were allowed to pollute so many pounds of all those chemicals per year under their permit. That's the, the equivalency of selling the air. They've sold the air to the other nine states surrounding Utah for them to come burn their medical waste here in your community. And so that would be all well and good. That would be a lawful activity. But what the state found out was that they were violating that by over four times the amount that they had sold your air for. I would represent to you, and I think Dr. Mitch would agree with me, that even in the permitted levels of the sale of your air, you would experience, you would be experiencing these health effects. Because when this plant was originally permitted, there were no homes here. As a matter of fact, they state in their permit application, there are no homes for two miles. And so, if you take all those things into account, and then you look at the situation in December 2011, when they were actually cheating on their permit, and that's what they got caught doing, that's what started this whole event that snowballed into the May 2013. So what happened is they realized in 2011 that 2012 was coming and that they needed to get their permit um, 
testing completed before the end of the year. How many people like to work between Christmas and New Year's? You get a lot done during that period of time? Well, the test was done on December 26th and 27th in 2011. Um, they had a tough time getting a, a testing company to come out. They were able to get the testing company to come out, and um, they had to bring in some specialists. But what Stericycle didn't have the opportunity to do that they did in 2010, and 2009, and 2008, and all preceding years, was they didn't have the opportunity to have their fixer from Houston come out and tear down the incinerator the week before Christmas and make sure it was nice and clean. And then they were able to throw all the newspaper in and burn newspaper and, and in a brand new cleaned and tweaked facility in 2011. So the local guy wasn't about to cheat, so he did it right. The laboratory where he sent his samples because of the, the quick time frame and turnaround was in Canada. Thank goodness for you folks that it was in Canada. Because when Stericycle found out that those samples actually existed, they attempted to destroy them. And I will tell you that a federal agent in the United States government actually had to call the mounted police in Canada to preserve those samples. That is how nefarious this company is and what they've done to this community. These are facts. Now, the United States government will neither confirm nor deny that Stericycle is the subject of a criminal investigation. That is a response I received Wednesday of this week. We cannot confirm or deny. However, the highest level in the Air Agency of the State of Utah is on record in the month of July 2013 stating Stericycle is under criminal investigation. So, I don't think he lied. I think that the state representative told you the truth when he said that Stericycle was under criminal investigation. So, what I want you to understand is, and if you've had the opportunity to look at the Bloom Mound, is this community has been subject to some pretty horrific activities. It would be dangerous to live in this community if they had complied with their permit. You are living in a community, as you all too well know, where they are violating that permit in orders of magnitude. We probably will never know what you've been exposed to. But I am willing to talk about levels that exceed four times their permit. They were able to get back in business in January 2012 under some pretty unusual conditions, on and off, on and off. I will tell you that Stericycle and these types of incinerators should have what they call an emergency bypass scrubber. The bypass is not supposed to be open and closed, open and closed, open and closed, like it has been, and, and we all have evidence of. But when the bypass does open, in many of these types of instances, you have a backup for the backup when you're engaged in such an ultra-hazardous activity, and that backup would be an emergency scrubber, to where you wouldn't have these fireballs coming out of the top of this, this um, bypass. The bypass would actually go through an emergency air scrubber, and at a minimum, it would take out the ash and the tar and the black smoke and, and, and most of the bad you know, substances. It's not going to get it all. But they don't care. They don't care. They're about just cramming 2,500 pounds of material through that incinerator. Now, here's what we also found during that criminal investigation of Stericycle. Well, that can neither confirm or deny. Um, but during the investigation, the employees that were questioned reported management literally hounding them, disciplining them, scolding them for not cramming more through the incinerator. The reason the bypass is opening so frequently is because they keep breaking the equipment. They're running the car at 9,000 RPM and not stopping. So when that bypass opens, yes, when you have a power outage, it'll open. But it'll also open when you pretty much blow the machine out. And so those are some of the instances that are occurring. What I'm representing to you folks today is we've just begun. So I'm going to let Aaron come up and talk to you about how the investigation is going to proceed, how you need to stick together as a community, and, and we'll go from, from there. And we'll both come up and answer questions. Something that's very important to think about when Aaron's talking to you about sticking together as a community. And this is not unique to Utah. And this is not unique to this particular area. But when you start talking about scary things like Dr. Mensch and the, the 
hazards to this community, people immediately go to my entire life savings is tied up in the property value of my home. And what does that mean? If this had not happened the way that it's happened and unfolded, I will tell you what we have learned, Aaron and I going around the country, is the evolution of environmental notification in the transaction of the sale of property has evolved in the last six weeks, six months, and six years at a very rapid rate. These computers that we're all becoming so accustomed to, and now the smartphones in our pockets, go on homefacts.com, talks about stericycles violation, and it draws a circle around your neighborhood. I can find that out anywhere in the world on my smartphone. So the fact that your neighbors have brought this to such a heightened attention and such a heightened alert, be thankful for that because now you can responsibly respond. Otherwise, you would have all been no better than Stericycle in selling your property and getting out of Dodge. Thank you very much. And Aaron, if you would.